Taking responsibility and having the willingness to discipline yourself to accept personal responsibility for your life is essential for happiness, health, success, achievement, and personal leadership. Accepting responsibility is one of the hardest of all disciplines, but without it, no success is possible. The failure to accept responsibility and the attempt to hoist responsibility for things in your life that make you unhappy onto other people, institutions and situations completely distorts cause and effect, undermines your character, weakens your resolve, and diminishes your humanity. It leads to making endless excuses. My great revelation came when I was 21. I was living in a tiny apartment and working as a construction laborer. I had to get up at 5 a.m. to take three buses to work in order to be there by 8 a.m. I didn't get home until 7 p.m., hired out from carrying construction materials all day. I was making just enough money to get by, and I had no car, almost no savings, and just enough clothes for my needs. I had no radio or television. It was in the middle of a cold winter, with a temperature at minus 35 degrees Fahrenheit, so I seldom went out in the evening. Instead, if I had enough energy, I sat in my small apartment at my little table in my kitchen nook, and read, One evening late at night as I was sitting there by myself at the table, it suddenly dawned on me that this is my life. This life was not a rehearsal for something else. The game was on, and I was the main character, as in a play. It was like a flashbulb going off in my face. I looked at myself and around me at my small apartment, and I considered the fact that I had not graduated from high school. The only work that I was qualified to do was manual labor. I earned just enough money to pay my basic expenses, and I had very little left over at the end of the month. I suddenly knew that unless I changed, nothing else was going to change. No one else was going to do it for me. In reality, no one else really cared. I realized at that moment that from that day forward, I was completely responsible for my life and for everything that happened to me. I was responsible. I could no longer blame my situation on my difficult childhood or mistakes I had made in the past. I was in charge. I was in the driver's seat. This was my life. And if I didn't do something to change it, it would go on like this indefinitely by the simple force of inertia. This revelation changed my life. I was never the same again. From that moment on, I accepted more and more responsibility for everything in my life. I accepted responsibility for doing my job better than before, rather than doing only the minimum that was necessary to avoid getting fired. I accepted responsibility for my finances, my health, and especially my future. The very next day, I went down to a local bookstore at my lunch break and began the lifelong practice of buying books with information, ideas, and lessons that could help me. I dedicated my life to self-improvement, to continuous learning in every way possible. For the rest of my business life right up to the present moment, whenever I wanted or needed to learn something to help me, I have returned to learning through reading, listening to audio programs, and attending courses and seminars. I found that you could learn anything you need to learn in order to accomplish any goal you set for yourself. Over time, I learned that fully 80% of the population never accepts complete responsibility for their lives. They continually complain, criticize, make excuses, and blame other people for things in their lives about which they're not happy. The consequences of this way of thinking, however, can be disastrous. They can sabotage all hopes for success and happiness later in life. From childhood to maturity, when you are growing up from an early age, you become conditioned to see yourself as not responsible for your life. This is normal and natural. When you're a child, your parents are in charge. They make all your decisions. They decide what food you will eat, what clothes you will wear, what toys you will play with, what home you will live in, what school you'll attend, and what activities you'll engage in during your spare time. Because you are young, innocent, and unknowing, you do what they want you to do. You have little choice or control. As you grow up, however, you begin to make more and more of your own decisions in each of these areas. But because of your early programming, you are conditioned unconsciously to feel that someone else is still responsible for your life. That there's still someone else out there who can or should take care of you. Most people grow up believing that if something goes wrong, someone else is responsible. Someone else is to blame. Someone else is guilty. Someone else is the villain. And they are the victim. As a result, most people make more and more excuses for the things in their lives past and present that make them unhappy. Get over the mistakes your parents made. If your parents criticized you or got angry with you for mistakes you made when you were growing up, 
you began to unconsciously assume that somehow you were at fault. If your parents punished you physically or emotionally for doing or not doing something that pleased or displeased them, you felt inferior and inadequate. When your parents withheld their love to punish you for not doing something they demanded, you might have grown up with deep feelings of guilt, unworthiness, and undeservingness. All these negative feelings could then intersect to make you feel like a victim, like you are not responsible for yourself or your life once you became an adult. The most common feeling that we have as adults if we have been raised in a critical home environment is the feeling that I'm not good enough. Because of this feeling, we compare ourselves unfavorably to others. We think that other people who seem to be happier or more confident are better than us. We develop feelings of inferiority. This can become an emotional trap. The fatal fallacy. If we think for any reason that others are better than us, we unconsciously assume that we must be worse than they are. If they are worth more than we are, we assume that we must be worth less. This feeling of inadequacy or worthlessness lies at the root of most personality problems in our lives, as well as most political and social problems in our world, both nationally and internationally. To escape from these feelings of guilt and worthlessness that have been instilled in us as a result of destructive criticism in childhood, we lash out in our world, other people, and situations in any part of our life with which we are unhappy or discontented. Our first reaction is to look around and ask who's to blame. Most religions teach the concept of sin, which states that whenever something goes wrong, someone is to blame, someone has done something bad, someone is guilty, someone must be punished. This whole idea of guilt and punishment leads to ever-increasing feelings of anger, resentment, and irresponsibility. An attitude of responsibility. Our courts today are clogged with thousands of people demanding redress and payment for something that went wrong in their lives. Backed up by ambitious plaintiff lawyers, people go to court demanding compensation, even if they themselves are completely at fault for what happened, especially if they are at fault. People don't want to accept responsibility. People spill hot coffee on themselves and sue the fast food restaurant that sold them the coffee in the first place. People get drunk and drive off the road and then turn around and sue the manufacturer of the 15-year-old car they were driving. People climb up on a stepladder and lean over too far, falling to the ground. They then sue the latter manufacturer for their injury. In each case, people are attempting to escape responsibility for their own behaviors by blaming someone else, making excuses, and then demanding compensation. Eliminating Negative Emotions The common denominator of all people is the desire to be happy. In its simplest terms, happiness arises from the absence of negative emotions. Where there are no negative emotions, all that is left is positive emotions. Therefore, the elimination of negative emotions is your great business in life if you truly wish to be happy. There are dozens of negative emotions, although the most common are guilt, resentment, envy, jealousy, fear, and hostility. They all ultimately boil down to a feeling of anger directed either inward or outward. Anger is directed inwardly when you bottle it up, rather than expressing it constructively to others. Anger is directed outwardly when you criticize or attack other people. Negative emotions are the major causes of psychosomatic illness. This occurs when the mind, psycho, makes the body, soma, sick. Negative emotions, especially as expressed in the form of anger, weaken your immune system and make you susceptible to colds, flu, and other diseases. Uncontrolled bursts of anger can actually bring about heart attacks, strokes, and nervous breakdowns. The Great Discovery While negative emotions, especially anger, depend for their very existence on your ability to blame someone or something else for something in your life that you're not happy about, it takes tremendous self-discipline to refrain from blaming others for our problems. It takes enormous self-control to refuse to make excuses. It takes tremendous self-discipline for you to accept complete responsibility for everything you are, everything you become, and everything that happens to you. Even if you are not directly responsible for something that happens, like Hurricane Katrina, you are responsible for your responses, for what you do and say from that moment forward. It takes tremendous self-mastery for you to take complete control of your unconscious mind and deliberately choose to think positive, constructive thoughts that enhance your life and improve the quality of your relationships and results. But the payoff of this form of positive thinking is tremendous. Blaming is easy. By following the path of least resistance, the easiest and most mindless behavior of all, 
is for a person to lash out and blame someone else anytime anything goes wrong for any reason. People who develop the habit of automatically blaming often become angry at things. Blaming inanimate objects when they do not function as expected is so silly that it almost becomes a mild form of insanity. People become angry at doors that stick. They swear at tools that they're using when they themselves make a mistake. They get mad when their car doesn't start. Even if it is an inanimate object, if it doesn't work perfectly, then the thing must be to blame. People will often kick a car that they are mad at, or a box that they tripped over. The Antidote to Negative Emotions The fastest and most dependable way to eliminate negative emotions is to immediately say, I am responsible, whenever something happens that triggers anger or a negative reaction of any kind. Quickly neutralize the feelings of negativity by saying, I am responsible. The law of substitution says that you can substitute a positive thought for a negative one. Since your mind can only hold one thought at a time, when you deliberately choose the positive thought, I am responsible, you cancel out any other thought or emotion at that moment. It is not possible to accept responsibility and remain angry at the same time. It's not possible to accept responsibility and experience negative emotions. It's not possible to accept responsibility without becoming calm, clear, positive, and focused once more. As long as you are blaming someone else for something in your life that you don't like, you will remain a mental child. You continue to see yourself as small and helpless, like a victim. You continue to lash out. However, when you begin to accept responsibility for everything that happens to you, you transform yourself into a mental adult. You will see yourself as being in charge of your own life and no longer a victim. In Alcoholics Anonymous, people who are having problems with drinking attend meetings with others going through the same situation. What they have found is that until the individual accepts responsibility for his or her problems both with alcohol and in other areas of life, no progress is possible. But after the person accepts responsibility, everything is possible. This is true with almost every difficult situation in life in which you project your unhappiness onto other people or factors outside yourself. Money and Emotions Many of our biggest problems and concerns in life have to do with money. Earning it, spending it, investing it, and especially losing it. As a result, many of our negative emotions are associated with money in some way. However, the fact is that you are responsible for your financial life. You choose, you decide, you're in charge. You cannot blame your financial problems or situation on other people. You are in the driver's seat. So it is only when you accept responsibility for your income, who chose to accept the job you are working at, your bills, who spent the money that put you into debt, and your investments, who made those decisions, can you move from becoming an economic child to an economic adult. Responsibility and Control there's a direct relationship between the acceptance of responsibility and the amount of personal control you feel you have over your life. This means that the more you accept responsibility, the greater sense of control you experience. There's also a direct relationship between the amount of control you feel you have and how positive you feel. The more you feel that you have a high sense of control in the important areas of your life, the more positive and happy you are in everything you do. When you accept responsibility, you feel strong, powerful, and purposeful. Accepting responsibility eliminates the negative emotions that rob you of happiness and contentment. In every situation, the antidote to negative emotions is to say, I am responsible. Then look into the situation to find the reasons why you are responsible for what happened or for what is going on. Your intelligence is like a double-edged sword. It can cut in either direction. You can use your intelligence to rationalize, justify, and blame other people for things you're not happy about. Or you can use your intelligence to find reasons why you are responsible for what happened and then take action to solve the problem or resolve the situation. You can make excuses or you can make progress. You choose. Even if an accident has occurred, such as your car being damaged in the parking lot while you're at work, you may not be legally at fault for the accident, but you are still responsible for your responses, for how you behave as a result of what happened. Never complain, never explain. The mark of the leader, the truly superior person, is that he or she accepts complete responsibility for the situation. It's not possible to imagine a true leader who whines and complains rather than taking action when problems and difficulties arise. This sense of responsibility is the mark of a highly developed personality.
You take responsibility for your life by resolving in advance that you will not become upset or angry over something that you cannot affect or change. Just as you do not become angry about the weather, you do not become angry over circumstances and situations over which you have no control. Furthermore, you especially do not allow yourself to be angry and unhappy in the present because of unhappy experiences or situations from the past. You say, what cannot be cured must be endured. It's amazing how many people are unhappy today because of a past event, even something that happened many years ago. Each time they think of the negative experience, they become angry or depressed once more. The good news is that at any time you can stop thinking about, discussing, and rehashing the past. You can let it go and begin thinking instead about your goals and your unlimited future. As Helen Keller said, when you turn toward the sunshine, the shadows fall behind you. Self-mastery and self-control Any self-discipline, self-mastery, and self-control begin with taking responsibility for your emotions. You take charge of your emotions by accepting 100% responsibility for yourself and for your responses to everything that happens to you. You refuse to make excuses, complain, criticize, or blame other people for anything. Instead you say, I am responsible, and then you take action of some kind. The only antidote is action. The only real antidote for anger or worry is purposeful action in the direction of your goals, which is the subject of the next chapter. Before you turn to that however, resolve today to first take complete control of your thoughts, feelings and actions, and then get so busy working on things that are important to you that you don't have time to think about or express negative emotions to, or about anyone for any reason. When you exert your self-discipline and willpower in the acceptance of personal responsibility for your life, you take complete control of your thoughts and feelings. By doing so, you become a much more effective, happy, and positive person in everything you do. I used to think that setting goals was the key to being successful, but the more I think about it, the more I reflect on it, the more I realize that accepting responsibility for your life is the starting point of all great accomplishment. And it's been well said over and over again that it's not the government, it's not our parents, it's not your boss, it's not your family or your bills, it's you. One of the things I've found, and it's sometimes hard to get used to, is the fact that no one else can live your life for you. No one else can make decisions for you, and in the final analysis, no one else really cares. And without the acceptance of responsibility, nothing else is possible. Walking, talking, thinking and acting like a fully responsible human being gives you a feeling of calmness, confidence, and self-control. Your income, your status, your security, your power, will always tend to be equal to the responsibilities you take on. This is one distinct area where winners and losers part company. Winners always look upon themselves as the cause of what happens to them. Losers are always blaming someone or something else. We know that people always seek the fastest and easiest way to get the things they want, and if something goes wrong, the thing they want is to get off the hook. So, the fastest and easiest way is always to blame someone else. But when we blame someone else to that degree, we give control of the problem to that other person, and we take control away from ourselves, and we become more negative and frustrated the more we try to make other people responsible for things in our lives that we don't like. In fact, if you stop blaming other people, you'll find that most of your negative emotions will go away. If you can't blame anybody, and the way you stop blaming is to accept responsibility, losers never accept responsibility, and winners always do. When things go well for losers, they blame it on luck. When things go poorly for losers, they blame it on the system. But winners accept both the credit and the blame for everything that happens to them. Fully responsible adults always look upon themselves as self-employed. They act as if they own the place. They treat the company they work for as though it belongs to them. The worst mistake you can ever make in your life is to ever think that you work for anybody else but yourself. All peak performers in every field and industry look upon themselves as though they work for themselves. Even if somebody else signs their paycheck, they look upon themselves as being self-employed and they treat the company as though it belonged to them. They accept full responsibility. If a paper clip falls on the floor, they pick it up. They never say, that's not my job. When they refer to their company, they say us, and our, and we. This company instead of they, and them, and the boss, and so on. Wherever you see an employee who is not totally committed to the company and to their work, you see a problem, 
and you see a person that you should never allocate more responsibility to. When we come out of school, we sometimes make the mistake of thinking that if we are to be educated further, it is up to our employer to do it. And this is one of the worst mistakes that you can make because irrespective of whether or not your employer offers you training opportunities, you are 100% responsible for continuing to upgrade your skills. Now here's another area of responsibility. The winner always asks, what results are expected of me? One of the qualities of peak performers is that they are always very results oriented. They always ask themselves, why am I on the payroll? And if you're not sure why you're on the payroll, the first thing you have to do is go and sit down with your boss and ask him why. Am I on the payroll? Now, you don't have to use these words, but here's a very simple technique. Take and write out a job description of what you think you're on the payroll to do. Write out a list of all the things that you're supposed to accomplish and give it to your boss, and have your boss organize that list in order of priority, which is most important, which is second in importance, which is third in importance and then always work on what is most important to your boss. Ask yourself, what can I and only I do that if done well, will make a real difference to my company? If you own your own company, this question is even more important. But working for another company, this is the key to rapid advancement and promotion. And do what will make a difference. To accept responsibility for specific results and always results that will make a difference. Winners always focus on solutions. They ask, where do we go from here? What do we do from here? There's a big difference between winners and losers. Winners always look to the future, and losers always look to the past. Winners always look to what can be done, and losers always look at who's to blame. Losers focus on problems, winners focus on solutions. Winners always look to themselves when there is a problem. Losers always look to others. So, if you want to achieve success within your work, always look to yourself whenever things don't go right. The rejection of responsibility leads to negative emotions. It leads to stress, denial, anger, frustration, and often psychosomatic illness. A negative mind actually depresses the immune system and makes the body sick. I think the refusal to accept responsibility for one's life is the primary reason for negativity and unhappiness in our society today. Many doctors are asking patients questions like this. Why did you need this illness? Why did you need this illness? Because what they're finding is that when people become sick, it's almost invariably because they need an illness to help them avoid dealing with some situation in their life. So what they do is they contract an illness, which is consistent with the severity of the situation. For instance, if you're feeling a little bit tired and overworked, you contract the cold or the flu. If you're feeling very, very harassed or frustrated in your life, you get something worse, right up to and including heart disease, strokes, and cancer. They found that many sick people, and especially very sick people, have a tendency to hold grudges for long periods of time, and that forgiving others is a vital part of getting over the illness, and in my experience, if you cannot forgive offenses against you to that degree, you are held back from success. And the more grudges you have, the more bitter you are, the less forgiving you are, the more unhappy you will be all of your life. So make it a rule, as they say, never to let the sun go down in your anger. Make it a rule to forgive everybody in your life who has ever done anything that has hurt you and let it go past so that you can commit all of your energies toward accomplishing the things that you really want in life. Well, what have we learned with regard to responsibility? Number one is the acceptance of responsibility for your life is the stepping stone to peak performance. That until you accept responsibility for your life, nothing happens. Number two is the more self-responsible you feel, the more control you have and the better you like yourself and the higher is your self-esteem. Number three, the expression of negative emotions caused by blaming others causes you to lose control and suffer diminished self-esteem. So catch yourself and stop yourself from blaming others by catching yourself and saying, I am responsible, I am responsible, I am responsible. Remember, the responsible person is solution-oriented, focused on the future rather than the past, and on what can be done versus who did what. While human beings make mistakes because we are anxious to get things done and to do things the fastest and easiest way, because often we're ignorant and we don't know everything you need to know, because often we're ambitious and we're in a hurry, and because often we are vain and our ego gets in the way. Because of these things, we make mistakes, and all human beings make mistakes. And a person who cannot accept the fact that others make mistakes is not cut out for greatness, is not cut out for leadership. 
The acceptance of complete responsibility for your success is the starting point of all great achievements, which is to sit down and say that anything that is going to happen to you, or for you in life, is up to you. But you cannot wait or hope that other people will do things for you, that you must take complete charge. Now you will find a very interesting thing that when you accept total responsibility for your life, other people will help you, and if you don't, nobody will help you. Even if they do, it won't do any good. So say to yourself, what is it that I want to accomplish? Where do I want to go? Where do I want to be? What do I want to have? And what do I have to do to get there? And then take full charge of the process. Make a habit of forgiving others, never carrying grudges around. Keep your mind calm, positive and focused on your goals. Your ability to eliminate the expression of negative emotions, to keep your mind positive by not becoming angry or frustrated, is a hallmark of a successful personality and a healthy personality. And your tendency to blame others, to hold grudges, not to forgive others, is something that can cause you to fail and underachieve in life. Finally, ask yourself each day, what kind of a company would my company be if everybody in it was just like me? This is the question of the truly responsible individual, and you will be amazed at how rapidly an attitude of responsibility can accelerate your career. If you walk, talk, and act like a responsible, self-assured individual, you will begin to feel calm, confident, and positive about yourself. If you resist the expediency factor, the tendency to blame others when things go wrong, if you discipline yourself to accept full responsibility for what happens in your life, it will raise your self-esteem and make you feel much better about yourself and everything that you're doing. By practicing the self-discipline necessary to refrain from blaming anyone for anything, you will develop courage, character, and self-esteem. If you do what successful people do, you will be successful too, and all successful men and women are self-responsible. When I was 21, I was broke and living in a small one-room apartment in the middle of a very cold winter, working on a construction job during the day. I usually couldn't afford to go out of my apartment in the evenings, where at least it was warm, so I had a lot of time to think. One night, as I sat there at my small kitchen table, I had a great flash of awareness that changed my life. I suddenly realized that everything that happened to me for the rest of my life was going to be up to me. No one else was ever going to help me. No one was coming to the rescue. I was thousands of miles from home, where I'd grown up, and had no intentions of going back for a long time. I saw clearly at that moment that if anything in my life were going to change, it would have to begin with me. If I didn't change, nothing else would change. I was responsible. I still remember that moment. It was like a first parachute jump. It was both scary and exhilarating. There I was, standing on the edge of life, and I decided to jump. From that moment onward, I accepted that I was in charge of my life. I knew that if I wanted things to be different, I would have to be different. Everything was up to me. Sadly enough, most people never do this. I've met countless men and women in their 40s and 50s who were still grumbling and complaining about earlier unhappy experiences and still blaming their problems on other people and circumstances. The greatest enemies of success and happiness are negative emotions of all kinds. It is negative emotions that hold you down, tire you out, and take away all your joy in life. One of your most important goals, if you want to be truly happy and successful, is to free yourself from negative emotions. And fortunately, this can be done if you learn how. The negative emotions of fear, self-pity, envy, jealousy, feelings of inferiority, and ultimately anger, are mostly caused by four factors. Once you identify and remove these factors from your thinking, your negative emotions stop automatically. The first of the four root causes of negative emotions is justification. You can only be negative as long as you can justify to yourself and others that you are entitled to be angry or upset for some reason. This is why angry people are continually explaining and elaborating on the reasons for their negative feelings. However, if you cannot justify your negativity, you cannot be angry. The second cause of negative emotions is rationalization. When you rationalize, you attempt to give a socially acceptable explanation for an otherwise socially unacceptable act. You rationalize to explain away, or to put a favorable light on something that you have done that you feel bad or unhappy about. You excuse your behavior or actions by creating an explanation that sounds good. 
even though you know that you were an active agent in whatever occurred. You often create complex ways of putting yourself in the right by explaining that your behavior was really quite acceptable, all things considered. This rationalizing keeps your negative emotions alive. Rationalization and justification always require that you make someone or something else the source or cause of your problem. You cast yourself in the role of the victim, and you make the other person or organization into the oppressor or the bad guy. The third cause of negative emotions is an over-concern or hypersensitivity to the way that others treat you. For some people, their entire self-image is determined by the way others speak to them, talk to them, or about them, or even look at them. They have little sense of personal value or self-worth apart from the opinions of others. And if those opinions are negative for any reason, real or imagined, the victim immediately experiences anger, embarrassment, shame, feelings of inferiority, and even depression, self-pity, and despair. This explains why psychologists say that almost everything we do is to earn the respect of others, or at least to avoid losing their respect. The fourth cause of negative emotions, and the worst of all, is blaming. When I draw the negative emotions tree in my seminars, I illustrate the trunk of the tree as the propensity to blame other people for our problems. Once you cut down the trunk of the tree, all the fruits of the tree, all the other negative emotions, die immediately. Just as when you jerk the plug out of the wall that lights up the Christmas lights in the tree, all the lights go out instantly. The antidote for negative emotions of all kinds is for you to accept complete responsibility for your situation. The very act of accepting responsibility short circuits and cancels out any negative emotions you may be experiencing. It's only when you free yourself from negative emotions by taking complete responsibility that you can begin to set and achieve goals in every area of your life. It's only when you are free mentally and emotionally that you can begin to channel your energies and enthusiasms in a forward direction. On the other hand, once you accept total responsibility for your life, there are no limits on what you can be, do, and have. From now on, refuse to blame anyone for anything, past, present, or future. As Eleanor Roosevelt said, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. If you make a mistake, say, I'm sorry, and get busy rectifying the situation. To keep your mind positive, refuse to criticize, complain about, or condemn other people for anything. Every time you criticize someone else, complain about something you don't like, or condemn someone else for something they have done or not done, you trigger feelings of negativity and anger within yourself, and you are the one who suffers. Your negativity doesn't affect the other person at all. Being angry with someone is allowing him or her to control your emotions, and often the entire quality of your life at long distance. This is just plain silly. Remember, positive emotions of happiness, excitement, love and enthusiasm make you feel more powerful and confident. Once you decide to accept complete responsibility for yourself, your situation, and for everything that happens to you, you can turn confidently toward your work and the affairs of your life. You become the master of your fate and the captain of your soul. In a study done in New York some years ago, researchers found that the top 3% of people in every field had a special attitude that set them apart from average performers in their industries. It was this. They viewed themselves as self-employed throughout their careers, no matter who signed their paychecks. They saw themselves as responsible for their companies exactly as if they owned the companies personally. You should do the same. If there's anything in your life that you don't like, you are responsible. You are responsible for the consequences of your actions and your behaviors. You're where you are and what you are today because you have decided to be there. In a large sense, you are earning today exactly what you have decided to earn, no more and no less. If you're not happy with your current income, decide to earn more. Set it as a goal, make a plan, and then get busy doing what you need to do to earn what it is you want to earn. Just as the president of a corporation is responsible for the strategy and activities of that corporation, you are also responsible for the personal strategic planning of your own life and career. You are responsible for overall management strategy, setting goals, making plans, establishing measures, and performing to get results. You are responsible for achieving certain outputs, for the quality and quantity of the work that you produce, and the results you are expected to get. As president, you are responsible for marketing strategy, for self-promotion and advancement, for creating your image and packaging yourself to be able to sell yourself for the very highest price in a competitive market. You are responsible for financial strategy, 
for deciding how much of your services you want to sell and how much you want to earn, how rapidly you want to grow your income year by year, how much you want to save and invest, and how much you want to be worth when you retire. You're responsible for your people strategy and your relationships, both at home and at work. One piece of advice I give my students is to choose your boss with care. Your choice of a boss is going to have a major impact on how much you earn, how fast you get ahead, and how happy you will be at your job. By the same token, your choice of a mate and friends will have as much or more to do with your success and happiness than any other decisions you make. Finally, as president, you are in complete charge of personal research and development, personal training and learning. It is up to you to determine the talents, skills, abilities, and core competencies you will need to earn the kind of money you want to earn in the months and years ahead. It is then your responsibility to make the investment, take the time to learn and develop these skills. Refuse to whine and complain about things that happened in the past which cannot be changed. Instead, orient yourself toward the future and think of what you want and where you're going. Above all, think about your goals. The very act of thinking about your goals makes you positive and purposeful once more. There's a direct relationship between the amount of responsibility you accept and the amount of control you feel. The more you say, I am responsible, the more of an internal locus of control you develop within yourself, and the more powerful and confident you feel. There's also a direct relationship between responsibility and happiness. The more responsibility you accept, the happier you become. It seems that all three, responsibility, control, and happiness, go together. The more responsibility you accept, the greater amount of control you feel you have, the happier and more confident you become. When you feel positive and in control of your life, you will set bigger and more challenging goals for yourself. You will also have the drive and determination to achieve them. You will feel as though you hold your whole life in your own hands and that you can make it into whatever you decide to. The starting point of goal setting is for you to realize that you have virtually unlimited potential to be have or do anything you really want in life if you simply want it badly enough and are willing to work long enough and hard enough to achieve it. The second part of goal setting is for you to accept complete responsibility for your life and for everything that happens to you with no blaming and no excuses. With these two concepts clearly in mind, that you have unlimited potential on the one hand and that you are completely responsible on the other, you are now ready to move to the next step, which is to begin designing your ideal future. Now here are three things you can do immediately to put these ideas into action. First, identify your biggest problem or source of negativity in life today. In what ways are you responsible for this situation? Second of all, see yourself as the president of your own company. How would you act differently if you own 100% of the shares of your current company? And third, resolve today to stop blaming anyone else for anything and instead accept complete responsibility in every area of your life. What actions should you be taking? Foreign is akin to the headquarters of your life, responsible for processing the influx of information from your environment. It identifies, analyzes, and compares this data against existing knowledge, ultimately guiding you in decision making. However, it's your subconscious mind where immense potential lies dormant. Over 90% of your mental capabilities reside beneath the surface, waiting to be tapped into. To unlock this latent power and propel yourself towards achieving your goals, clarity is paramount. Your subconscious operates optimally with well-defined objectives, specific tasks, and clear deadlines. The more meticulously you program these parameters into your subconscious, the more efficiently it operates, leading to increased productivity in shorter time frames. As you embark on your journey towards your goals, establishing benchmarks and measures is indispensable. Regular evaluation of your progress with precise metrics enhances your ability to stay on track. Your subconscious thrives on a structured environment, necessitating self-imposed deadlines to drive task completion and goal attainment. Commitment, completion and closure serve as the pillars of peak performance and goal achievement. Firmly committing to your objectives, ensuring every task is carried out to its entirety, and bringing closure to each endeavor are indispensable practices for success. Embrace these principles and watch as your subconscious powers drive you towards unparalleled accomplishments. When you firmly commit to achieving a specific goal and cast aside all excuses, it's akin to pressing down on the accelerator of your subconscious mind. This ignites a surge of creativity, determination, and focus unlike anything before.
Truly remarkable individuals are those who make unwavering commitments and stand firm in their resolve, regardless of obstacles. Completion serves as the second crucial element in peak performance. There exists a vast disparity between accomplishing 95% of a task and completing it entirely. It's a common tendency for individuals to exert significant effort up to the 90 or 95% mark, only to falter and procrastinate in the final stretch. This temptation must be resisted steadfastly. Discipline yourself to push through and achieve full completion every time. Each task completed triggers a release of endorphins in your brain, inducing a sense of well-being, elation, and heightened creativity. The significance of the task correlates with the quantity of endorphins released, akin to a reward for your success and achievement. Over time, you can develop a positive addiction to these feelings of accomplishment. Whether it's a small or large task, completing each step towards a larger goal brings a sense of happiness and exhilaration. Working steadily towards completing important tasks fills you with a continuous sense of joy and fulfillment. Everyone desires to feel like a winner, and true victory lies in completing tasks at 100%. Developing the habit of consistently finishing what you start transforms your life in unimaginable ways. In psychology, the principle holds true. The completion of tasks leads to psychological growth and fulfillment. Incomplete actions are significant contributors to stress and anxiety. Much of the unhappiness people experience stems from their inability to discipline themselves to follow through and complete important tasks or responsibilities. If you've ever procrastinated on a major assignment, you understand the mounting stress as the deadline approaches. It can disrupt sleep and affect your personality. However, once you muster the courage to tackle the task and see it through to completion, a profound sense of relief and well-being washes over you. It's as if nature rewards positive life-enhancing actions and penalizes procrastination with stress and dissatisfaction. In modern management, the use of balanced scorecards is prevalent. These tools encourage individuals at every level of the organization to identify key performance indicators and score themselves regularly in those areas. Simply the act of identifying a metric and paying attention to it leads to performance improvement. For instance, knowing you'll be evaluated on your listening skills in a meeting prompts you to listen more attentively. Similarly, setting benchmarks, creating scorecards, and establishing deadlines for key tasks activate your subconscious forcing system. This system motivates and propels you to work diligently toward your goals, even at an unconscious level. Closure plays a crucial role in personal and business life. It distinguishes between an open loop and a closed loop. Achieving closure on tasks and issues is essential for happiness and maintaining control over your situation. Conversely, unresolved matters and incomplete actions drain physical and emotional energy, leading to stress, dissatisfaction, and potential failure. Dependability, therefore, emerges as one of the most crucial abilities in the world of work. To achieve higher pay and quicker promotion, it's crucial to build a reputation for consistently completing tasks promptly, effectively, and according to schedule. Regardless of your objectives, start by compiling a comprehensive list of tasks necessary for their achievement. Assign a deadline to each task, and then diligently work every day and hour to meet those deadlines. Monitor your progress regularly, adjusting your pace as needed to stay on course. Remember, you can't hit a target you can't see clearly. The clearer you are about deadlines and performance measures, the more you'll accomplish and the faster you'll achieve your goals. A goal or decision lacking a deadline is merely a discussion without energy behind it, akin to a bullet without powder in the cartridge. Setting and adhering to deadlines is crucial. Otherwise, you risk falling short in both life and work. If you miss a deadline, don't be discouraged. Simply set a new deadline and persevere until you reach your objective. Over time, you'll become more adept at estimating task completion times, enhancing your efficiency in meeting deadlines. Break down long-term goals into smaller manageable tasks, including annual, monthly, weekly, and even hourly objectives. Even if your ultimate goal is financial independence, break it down into how you'll utilize each hour of the upcoming day to increase your chances of achieving long-term financial freedom. Remember that all income results from added value. Continuously assess how you can add more value to your work to increase your worth and earning potential. Focus on honing the skills that provide the most value and strive to improve them further each day. By breaking tasks into manageable pieces, setting deadlines, and focusing on completing one task at a time, you'll be amazed at how much you can accomplish. 
As the saying goes, inch by inch, anything's a cinch. If you aim to boost your hourly rate and overall income, focus on improving the most critical aspects of your daily routine. Dedicate at least an hour each day to self-improvement. Read materials relevant to your field. Listen to educational audio programs during your commute. And seize opportunities to take additional courses whenever possible. These actions will propel your career onto the fast track, significantly enhancing your ability to produce results. Similarly, achieving weight loss can be simplified with a straightforward approach. Eat less and exercise more. Discipline yourself to consume slightly fewer calories while opting for higher quality foods and simultaneously increase your daily physical activity. By consistently following this regimen, you can establish a pattern of losing weight at a steady pace, leading to significant long-term results. For those aspiring to wealth, scrutinize every expense meticulously. Set a daily savings goal, whether it's three, five, or ten dollars, and commit to depositing this amount into a savings account without fail. As your savings accumulate, invest them wisely in mutual funds or index funds, ensuring steady growth over time. Cultivate a habit of saving and investing regularly, and watch as your financial stability improves, eventually leading to financial independence. To expand your knowledge and cultural literacy, allocate just 15 minutes each evening to reading instead of watching television. By consistently dedicating this time to literary classics, you can devour an impressive number of books over time, becoming one of the most well-read individuals in your generation. In sales, track your daily, weekly, and monthly activities meticulously, such as calls made, presentations delivered, proposals submitted, and sales closed. Set ambitious goals to increase these numbers steadily, pushing yourself to achieve more each day. By focusing on specific performance metrics and consistently striving to surpass your own standards, you'll see tangible improvements in your sales performance and overall success. Ultimately, in all areas of life, success often boils down to focused attention on specific metrics and disciplined effort towards continuous improvement. By identifying key performance indicators and dedicating yourself to surpassing them consistently, you can unlock your full potential and achieve your goals, whether they relate to income, health, knowledge, or professional success. If you aim for financial success, you can focus on metrics such as your hourly earnings or the amount you save each month. In sales, tracking metrics like the number of calls made daily or the volume and size of sales achieved monthly can drive success. Similarly, in relationships, prioritize face-to-face -face time with loved ones, tracking the minutes spent together daily and weekly. Remember the adages, what gets measured gets done, and if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. Setting specific goals and diligently tracking your progress each day ensures you achieve your desired outcomes as planned, if not sooner. One of the words that destroys everything is called neglect, and I found this out. A week of neglect could cost you a year of repair. Here's the list of attitude diseases. Number one is indifference, the shrug of the shoulder. The guy is not even concerned, he's just drifting. Well, to be any kind of winner, you've got to get worked up. There's one problem with drift. You cannot drift to the top of the mountain. A life full of adventure is a life full of many decisions. The ones that turn out to be wrong give you better experience to make better decisions. So, don't see how many decisions you can get out of, see how many decisions you can get into. That's where the adventure is. So shake off this disease. Indecision. The next one is doubt, and one of the worst is self-doubt. The guy doubts himself, doubts if it'll last that long for him, doubts if he can do that well, doubts if he can make that much, doubts if he can accomplish all that. So here's the key. Turn this coin over and become a believer. And there are many things to believe in. One of the majors is yourself. Now, if those three don't get you, this one will. Worry. That's a devastating disease. Worry causes health problems, social problems, personal problems, family problems. I used to have it bad. I used to be known as a super warrior. Not a super warrior, no. A super warrior. My advice to you is do what I finally did on worry give it up. I'm not saying it's easy, it took me almost one year to kick the worry habit, and it was not an easy year, but I learned how to do it, and you can too. Here's the next attitude disease, over caution. Now you can also be too reckless, but you can also be too cautious. And my caution was always at risk. Risk used to drive me right up the wall. And I'll tell you what changed my whole life. When I finally discovered, 
it's all risky. The minute you were born, it got risky. The Englishman says, well, if that's the way it's going to work out, let's give it a go, right? That's what it's for, to give it a go. Somebody says, yeah, but I'm looking for safety and security. Fine, then huddle in a corner, we'll cover you with a sheet, bring you three meals a day, and we'll protect you, feed you, look after you, care for you, care for you, care for you. The guy said, yeah, I'd live to be 100, but what a way to live, right? What a way to live, safe and secure. And see, it's not important how long you live, what's important is how you live. Here's the next attitude disease, pessimism. The poor pessimist leads an ugly life. He doesn't try to figure out what's right. He tries to figure out what's wrong. He doesn't look for virtue. He looks for faults. To the pessimist, the glass is always half empty. To the optimist, the glass is half full. What's important is how we feel about life that will decide how life feels about us. If we think we're going to fail, we might not even try. We are more likely to succeed in life if we have a positive I can do it attitude than if we have a negative I can't attitude. So, attitude is the magic word that can change our lives. It's up to us to have a good attitude about life and all the problems it brings. Before we talk about our attitude toward the world, it's important to discuss our attitude toward ourselves. We tend to minimize our own abilities and the goals we can achieve. We also tend to believe that others can accomplish things in our field that we cannot. As a result of this defensive, doubtful attitude toward ourselves, many people live narrow, darkened, and frustrated lives. However, those who stay young all their lives not only welcome change but see it for what it really is. A new opportunity, a chance for further fulfillment. Attitude is a reflection of a person's will, and it's incalculably powerful. It can bring about marvelous results for us, but we need to train it patiently day by day. Successful people, who constitute the top 5% of individuals, who go from one success to another, have a particular kind of attitude towards themselves and life that sets them apart from the rest. They possess a strong belief in their ability to accomplish what they set out to do, and they approach life with a healthy and positive attitude. Successful people possess an attitude towards themselves that is characterized by healthy self-esteem, confidence, and a positive outlook. They also have a healthy attitude towards failure, seeing it as an opportunity to learn and improve, rather than a setback. One of the remarkable things about successful people is that they come to be called successful, outstanding, brilliant, lucky, and a host of other accolades, even though they are not necessarily more intelligent or outstanding than the people around them. They're unwavering in their ability to succeed. Healthy self-esteem and a positive outlook set them apart from the rest. They see failure as an opportunity to learn and grow, and obstacles as opportunities to overcome. By developing the right attitude towards themselves in life, anyone can achieve success and live their best life. The importance of attitude cannot be overstated. People who are successful, regardless of their field or background, all have one thing in common. The right attitude. They expect more good out of life than bad, and they expect to succeed more than they fail. This mindset makes them resilient to failures and setbacks. The world we live in is impersonal, and does not care whether we change or not. However, adopting a good healthy attitude towards life can make a huge difference in our lives. By adopting a successful attitude, we can achieve our goals and lead a fulfilling life. It doesn't matter how good your attitude has been in the past, there's always room for improvement. Small refinements upon something already good can make it great. So here's the test for the next 30 days. Act towards the world. Everything and everyone with whom you come in contact with the attitude that represents the kind of results you want to achieve. For instance, if you want to be more successful in what you're doing, act as though you are already in possession of the success you seek. If you want others to treat you with admiration and respect, treat others with admiration and respect first. When you treat others with respect and kindness, you are likely to receive the same treatment in return. This can lead to better relationships, improved communication, and ultimately, more happiness and success in your personal and professional life. Success is not just about personal achievement, but also about the relationships and connections they make along the way. When you have a positive attitude, people are naturally drawn to you. So for the next 30 days, make a conscious effort to treat others with the same kindness and respect that you want to be treated with. The key here is to approach each interaction with a positive mindset. 
Instead of focusing on what you can get out of the interaction, focus on what you can give. Remember, the good attitude is not something you have to be born with. It's something that can be developed through conscious effort and practice. You would recognize that when a person consistently acts with a positive and productive attitude, they have already placed themselves on the path to success. You would know that this kind of attitude places a person in the top 5% of individuals in any country. Similarly, before building a structure, the excavation and foundation must be laid. In order to achieve the kind of life a person wants, they must become the kind of individual they wish to be. They must think, act, talk, walk, and conduct themselves in all their affairs as the person they wish to become. Once a person becomes that individual, the things that person would have and do will naturally come to them almost immediately. Irritations that used to frustrate and annoy will disappear. When someone gives them a hard time, they will stay on track and not let the negative behavior affect them. By acting with a positive attitude, a person separates themselves from this negative group and begins to attract positive experiences and people into their lives. It's a universal truth that every human being has a deep-seated desire to feel valued and important. This need is not restricted to any particular gender or age group, but rather it is a fundamental need that every individual has. From the time we are born, we crave attention and affection from those around us, and this need only intensifies as we grow older. On the other hand, when someone treats you with respect and kindness, acknowledges your efforts and makes you feel important, it feels great, doesn't it? This is a feeling that we all crave and seek in our personal and professional relationships. Can you guess what's the most important quality to predict success and happiness in life? It's optimism. What they found was that successful people had really high levels of optimism. They were really optimistic. They were positive most of the time. Does that mean they didn't have problems? Oh, they had far more problems than the average person because they tried more things. They found that optimists had two great qualities which led to their success. Number one was they tried more things because they had an unrealistic expectation that they would be successful. They just kind of believed they would be successful. Yeah, they believed that if they just kept on, they would be successful. So they tried more things. Now the second quality they had is they persisted more because they had an unrealistic expectation that if they just persisted more, they'd succeed. What optimists have is what I call orientations. And the first orientation that optimists had is future orientation. They think about where they're going most of the time, they think about the possibilities of the future, and they idealize. There are four areas where optimists idealize. Great health, loving relationships, meaningful work, and financial independence. Now the second part, the second orientation that successful people have is goal orientation. Goal orientation means that they have very clear, written goals that they work on every single day. And the third orientation is excellence orientation. In order to achieve something you have never achieved before, you have to be good at something you've never been good at before. You have to develop skills you've never had before. The only way we're going to get to the top 10% is by becoming very good at what we do. There are no shortcuts, we just have to get down and work it out. And the fourth orientation is growth orientation. Growth orientation is the key to the future and the key to your success as well. There are three things. Read on a regular basis, attend all the seminars that you can, and have a mentor. So there you have it. Attitude is everything. With the right attitude, you can achieve anything you set your mind to. So go out there, be optimistic, set clear goals, drive for excellence, and never stop growing.